Welcome back to the Hydrate History Podcast. I'm your host, Kate Nelswick, and I'm here with a good friend of mine, Dennis. Dennis, what are you here for? What are you here to tell us about? Yeah, I'm here to talk about Simone Bolivar and the revolutions you started in South America. That's amazing. Would what would you tell me something about Simone Bolivar's early life? Well, Simone Bolivar was born a child. A child of a Venezuelan aristocrat. By the time he was nine, both of his parents died. His uncle took him in and hired him three tutors, one of which, named Simone Rodriguez, was a disciple of Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Bolivar went to Europe where he married the daughter of a Spanish diplomat. Less than a year later, his wife died of disease. Tragic. I, I, my heart is out for the man. Um, the would owl. you tell me where this all started in the Venezuela Revolution? Well, after his wife's death in 1803, Simone returned to Europe to spend time with Napoleon. Napoleon? The, yes. No, the Emperor of France. The very short guy. Yeah, he was advertised in town, actually. I'm sure he was. Pretty much, he, hanging on Napoleon, he saw how him seizing power didn't work out for him in the end. And this is why he decided not to have, take a title as Emperor King ever in his life and stuck as Liberator, insisting it was a better title. But anyways, he returned to Venezuela in 1807 to find that Napoleon had given his, had given his brother Joseph Bonaparte all of Spain and its colonies. Simone jo soon joined the resistance against Spain. Wow. A resistance group based in Caracas gained independence in 1810, and Simone returned to Britain on a diplomatic mission, asking for support of the revolution and help with gaining independence. The mission failed, but the remainder of the time he spent in Britain was used to study the social structure and society. He returned to Venezuela and joined in on a freedom rally. He joined the Caracas army under the leadership of General Miranda, and he was placed in charge of Puerto Cabello. His friendship with Miranda went south, and Bolivar handed Miranda over to the Spaniards. Bolivar left for New Grenada, and while he was back in Grenada's revolution, he led a large military campaign across Venezuela and regained control from the Spaniards. The people of Venezuela had enough of the independence fighters, and a civil war broke out, causing Bolivar to go to extreme measures, such as killing prisoners. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. In 1814, the Spaniards retook Venezuela and kicked Bolivar out again. While in exile in Jamaica, Bolivar wrote several letters to the USA and Great Britain, which received no response. The Spanish then sent the largest ever force to cross the Atlantic. In a last ditch effort, Bolivar asked the newly freed Haiti for help, which, for which they supplied men and guns. Hmm. Fun fact, the, the force that Spain sent was actually 10,000 men and 60 ships. Very big. Um, also, a very big waste of time in my opinion. Honestly, I would just cut them off. It really isn't worth it anymore. Um, Let's get into New Grenada's liberation. Well, in 1817, Bolivar set up a new headquarters on the Orinoco River and went to work spreading propaganda and preparing for his next move. In 1819, he launched his liberation of New Grenada. He took an odd route through the floodplains in a rainy season. The men marched in swamp-like conditions, but this was the easier part of their journey. Wow. Yeah, wait till you hear this. To reach Bogota, they had to ascend the Andes Mountains. The Spanish believed this plan was inconceivable, but Bolivar found it to be the perfect opportunity. He crossed the mountains at the Pass of Pisba, losing many men to the cold. However, this crossing allowed his troops to enter New Grenada unopposed. They met no opposition until they were three days from Bogota, where they battled the Spanish forces. The Battle of Boyaca on August 7, 1819, was a major victory for Bolivar. The main Spanish force surrendered to him there, and he took Bogota three days later. With this new land, Bolivar founded the Republic of Canada, which we more commonly call now Gran Colombia. And the territory claims of Gran Colombia included Venezuela, New Grenada, and Ecuador. After drafting the constitution, he left the capital to, to continue his military campaigning. Fun fact, though. All of these claims he had, they were still under Spanish rule. So it was really just paperwork, hmm. and then it would actually be conquered later on. 
Interesting. Why don't you tell me about the liberation of Peru? Alright, so at this point, Simon Bolivar had already liberated all the land claims that Grand Colombia had. But only the United States recognized them as a country. Peru and the Upper Peru are the only countries that were under the control by Spain at this point, and the Argentine Revolution brought Simon and Jose San Martin together. Right. San Martin went to Lima and declared independence, and the Spanish retreated into the highlands. San Martin later resigned and went to Agadao because he couldn't help Bolivar, though. In 1823, Simon arrived in Lima. In 1824, he assembled his troops and left the capital and ascended to the high... Cordillera. The first major battle was at Junin. Simon won that battle easily. On December 9th, the Spanish Viceroy lost and surrendered at the Battle of Ayacucho. Wow. Some interesting stuff. Um, why don't you tell us about Grand Colombia, a big part of the revolution. Actually, I think we should refer that to our expert on Grand Colombia. Very good. I'll send you over to our expert, Wyatt. Hey, what is up, guys? Yes, I'm excited to be here, and my name is also Wyatt Niffin. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about Grand Colombia, and yeah. Before Simon founded Grand Colombia, the government was run by the military. When Simon was campaigning, his vice president had a direct executive power. In 1819, Simon helped make a regular government in Venezuela. The Republic was created with the Congress of Sicuta in 1821. When Simon was in office, the Constitution was a two-house legislature. He also had a revolution in 1826 to fight. He was a dictator for two years from 1823 to 1830. In that time, he made a new constitution structure that was only implemented for Nueva Granda, which is Colombia and Panama. See you, Yogi. Thanks for that, Wyatt. Now, back to you. Let's move on to Bolivia. Well. A small section of Peru was still occupied by royalists, and in 1825 it was taken over by Bolivar. The new country was then named Bolivia, in honor of the liberator. Short and very sweet. Oh, yeah. Would you tell us about the end of his reign and the end of his life? Well, Simon resigned and went to the northern coast in 1830. He went near Santa Marta, where he died. Didn't wow. He, he never made it to Europe where he was going to. That Poor guy. He ended up dying on December 17th, 1830. At the age of, uh, 47? Yes. And his okay. empire collapsed in the next year. As he was holding it together. That's gonna do us all for this episode. Um, remember to subscribe and come back for later episodes. And, uh, I'd like to thank my special guest, Dennis. Uh, round of applause for Dennis, everybody. Good job, Dennis! I'll see you guys later. Hydrate or dehydrate?